beautiful ladies, and welcome to Displaying Your Inner Beauty on the Outside, the podcast about navigating life through the lens of fashion. I'm your host and styling consult, VLR Stylist. Have you ever felt like fashion only applies if you have to bear it all or wear big, bright, bold colors and prints? Well, trust me, you are not alone. When it comes to the topic of modesty, fashion is rarely a topic of discussion. Until now, that is. On today's episode, we are going to talk about how modesty isn't a mystery. We're going to take a deep dive into what is modesty, what it means to us as individuals, and how to incorporate it into a world of fashion that is all about bearing it all. So if you are enjoying these deep dives into various lifestyle topics as it relates to fashion, feel free to subscribe to the podcast and follow me on Instagram so that way you can see some of the photos as it relates to the topic of discussion. This way you get a 360 view of every single topic that you hear on the podcast as well as what you see on Instagram and even in the blog if you decide to follow that too. All right, now that that's out the way, let's get started. What is modesty? The dictionary defines modesty as behavior, manner, or appearance intended to avoid indecency. Many religions and cultures have adopted this definition as a means to set the standard or expectation of what is or isn't appropriate. These standards can range from what body parts should be covered, to how tight or loose a piece of clothing should fit, or even to how much endowment or embellishments are allowed within a particular group, whether that's jewelry, makeup, etc., And while I highly encourage you to research what is or isn't appropriate as it relates to uh, whatever religion or culture you might subscribe to, today I really want to focus on our own personal definition of modesty. For some people, modesty might mean actually having various body parts or not showing too much skin in various places. For others, it could mean being more neutral, a little bit more muted. They don't like to wear bright colors, very bold prints, They would rather their personality shine rather than their clothing. And for somebody else, modesty could mean hiding or minimizing their natural figure. Maybe they don't want to draw attention to their shape, or maybe they just want it to be a surprise when swimsuit season comes around. Regardless, take a moment and think about what does modesty mean for you? Think about what's going to make you feel the most comfortable, the most beautiful, and the most yourself as it relates to fashion and clothing. If there were no societal, cultural, or religious influence, what would modesty look like for you personally? All right, got it? Now that you have an idea of what modesty means for you and what will make you feel the most comfortable and confident, now we're going to apply it to fashion. To see or not to see, that is the question. So when we talk about modesty as it relates to revealing or non-revealing clothing, this is usually the go-to of what people think of when they say, oh, I want to have more modest fashion. They're talking about wanting to cover various body parts or not showing too much skin. Now, I will say when it comes to the topic of being revealing or not revealing, there is a very wide net that needs to be cast. For some people, being modest doesn't mean covering all of their skin. But for other people, that's what the very definition means. It means to be completely covered from head to toe. Regardless of where you fall on the spectrum, we're going to talk a bit about how you can be your definition of modest as it refers to being covered in a fashionable way. One of my favorite trends when it comes to having a more modest wardrobe as it relates to being covered is having longer tops. Now, I know a lot of people, when you think longer tops, you're like, oh, you mean baggy tops that are not really complimentary? They're not going to show my shape or anything like that? Absolutely not. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about finding some tops. Tunics are my personal go-to, but there are lots of different styles. But you're looking for a top of some sort that is going to be a little bit longer than most. Of course, it's not going to be nearly as short as a crop top, but it should be a bit longer than your traditional t-shirt. The wonderful thing about longer tops, specifically tunics, is how versatile they are when it comes to styling. 
With tunics, you can wear them by themselves as a dress. You can wear them with leggings. You can wear them with shorts. You can wear them with tights if you want to. I've seen a couple of outfits that I personally really love of tunics that are worn with boots. Now, granted, it's the summertime and it's like a million degrees outside, so wearing tunics and boots is probably not the best idea, but you can absolutely wear thigh-high or calf-high sandals or wedges with a tunic. That would be super cute in a pair of shorts. Tunics can also be layered as well. If you wanted to wear a jacket over it, a scarf, if you wanted to just kind of do a simple shawl, you can absolutely do that with a tunic. When it comes to jewelry, the sky's the limit. Generally speaking, tunic tops are quite neutral or quite basic, if you will, in their essence. The neckline isn't really detailed, the colors aren't really that interesting, and the prints are not often that bold. So you do have a lot of leeway when it comes to accessorizing with a tunic top. So not only are you going to have your upper torso covered in a way that makes you feel the most comfortable, you can add your own personality and spin to it by adding different types of accessories. You can add different shoes. Do your makeup a certain way? Do your hair a certain way? There's a lot of options when it comes to tunic tops as it pertains to being covered. My second tip is related to layers. My 90s girls, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Camis on camis on camis on camis. I remember being in middle school slash high school wanting to wear multicolored camis because that is what was in. Now, while we may not want to be wearing that many camis now, layers are still a great option when it comes to being a bit more modest. From jackets to undershirts to t-shirts to tank tops to sports bras that are very high, there are so many different ways that you can cover up a normal top or a top that's a bit too revealing and still make it fashionable. There are a couple of Asian influencers that I have seen all over Instagram who do a fantastic job of this. There's one particular young lady whose name is escaping me, but she had on the most beautiful dress I've ever seen. It was a long floor length dress. It had a very low cut v-neck in the front and spaghetti straps. Now for herself, she felt that was a bit too revealing. So instead she put on a very interesting looking turtleneck with her dress and it worked. It was so pretty. She absolutely rocked it. She had a lovely necklace with it with matching earrings and her handbag just brought the whole look together. So layering is another fantastic option if you have a piece that you absolutely love. Maybe you saw it at the store and you thought, man, these colors would be perfect in my wardrobe. I have the perfect pair of shoes for this. This would match my new handbag or this really helps to bring my new hairstyle together. But it's a bit too revealing. Layering is going to be the perfect way to really wear what you want to wear, but still be modest and still be comfortable. If you are interested in more in-depth tips on how to layer, don't forget to follow me on Instagram because I will be posting pictures of a couple of pieces and how to layer them in such a way that's still very fashionable, but a bit modest. Lastly, accessories. When it comes to being modest and to make more revealing clothing a little bit more modest, accessories are your best friend. Accessories go a very, 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 very long way. Let's say, for example, you have on a dress, kind of like the influencer I had mentioned before. You have on a dress that you absolutely love, but it's a bit too short and it's a bit too low cut for your personal taste. But you really love the color of the dress. You actually really do like the cut. It's just a little too revealing. Accessories are a great way of adding some modesty to something like that. For the bottom half, I would recommend wearing a pair of tights. There are so many different tights out there that can really make or break an outfit. So choose a pair that really encompasses who you are, whether they're fishnet tights, sheer tights, multicolored tights, even leather tights. There is a tight out there that would look fabulous with this particular dress that works for you. For the top part, you have a couple of options. Since we're talking accessories, I would go with a very chunky necklace or a scarf. Scarves are a bit easier to work with when it comes to this and they have a bit more versatility to them just because you can remove them, reposition them, retie them, and do a number of things depending on where you're going. 
say you're going to dinner in this dress and you want to be a bit more casual, well, then you might wrap the scarf around you as more of a shawl. But let's say you're going to more of a formal place, let's say the premiere of a movie, for example, you might opt to tie the scarf around your neck and let it drape, kind of like a very feminine tie, if you will. So when it comes to being modest and it, it comes to minimizing how revealing certain clothing are, accessories are another go-to option. And once again, if you want to see some examples of that, don't forget to follow me on Instagram because I'll also have pictures of that as well. Bright and bold versus neutral and soft. In addition to thinking about revealing versus non-revealing clothes as it pertains to modesty, another topic of discussion is how we use or don't use colors in our daily wardrobe. For some people, modesty means not drawing too much attention to yourself or to your clothing using colors in prints. These people tend to opt for more neutral aesthetic. They like beiges, whites, blacks, grays, etc. And they often shy away from colors. Similarly, they tend to go with more muted prints. Monochromatic prints, micro prints, prints that are the same color as the fabric, etc. If you find yourself identifying with this definition of modesty, you're in the right place. We're going to dive in to ways that you can be modest through colors and through prints, as well as not losing your individuality and who you are. So strap in, I've got some awesome tips for you when it comes to how to dress fashionable and modest using colors, or not really using any colors, and using very muted prints. Monochromatic is one of the easiest ways to style your wardrobe when you want to deal with more muted colors. Generally speaking, monochromatic refers to grays, blacks, and whites, but you could easily do this with a pop of color and a neutral. Generally speaking, when you're wanting to dress in monochromatics, you might have a black top with white pants, or you might do a gray skirt with a white sweater. Your goal is to have one solid color on top and one solid color on the bottom. If you choose a top, for example, that is monochromatic in itself, you might notice that the top of your shirt around the neckline and the shoulders is one color and the bottom of the shirt is a different color. You can easily dress in monochromatic with various monochromatic pieces in and of itself. Take the top that I mentioned in, in this example. The top is white at the top, at the neckline and the shoulders, and the bottom half is a light gray. Now you might add in a pair of black pants, a black skirt, maybe even do a white pair of pants or a white skirt, and then you'll have a monochromatic look throughout the entire outfit based off of the one top. You can even add in monochromatic when it comes to colors if you wanna just spruce up your wardrobe a little bit. Take a top that is solid white. You might add a pop of color in your belt and have a pair of pants that are white. You could also have, say, a gray top with a black belt and a pop of color in your bottoms, maybe a light green, a light blue, etc. You can even do monochromatic with colors that are of the same tone and shade as the neutrals. For example, let's say you take a light gray pair of pants, but you want to do a monochromatic look with green you would choose a green top that is of the same shade and tone as your gray pants, creating a monochromatic look this way. You would also add a definitive line by adding in a black belt or a white belt, depending on if you're going for a more winter look or a summer look. If monochromatic styling really stood out to you, if you felt like, yes, this is exactly what I've been looking for when it comes to defining my wardrobe, my modest wardrobe as it pertains to colors, then congratulations, I'm so happy for you. Take these tips and tricks the next time you're out and about shopping or when you're ready to do a full wardrobe detox. All right, now let's talk about prints. Did you know that it's possible to have a neutral and modest wardrobe using prints? I know, usually you wouldn't think of neutral, modest, muted when you talk about prints, but there is a way to do it. 
If you're the kind of girl who loves prints but doesn't want your wardrobe to be defined by all of the prints and you want something a little bit more modest, a little bit more conservative, then this is a section for you. When it comes to making prints a bit more modest, it is all in how you style them. To be completely honest, that's kind of how it goes when it comes to prints. Generally speaking, when you look at prints, you'll see a lot of different colors within one pattern. Let's talk about plaid, for example. Probably one of the hardest prints to make modest as it comes to doling down those colors. Plaid has so many colors going on with it that a lot of people are quite intimidated by styling with plaid, especially if you're the kind of person who doesn't want your clothes to be that loud and that bold. But fear not, I've got some things to help you out. I've got some tips and some tricks to help you style your favorite prints in a more modest way. First, choose one of the colors in that print, in that pattern that you love so much. Using our plaid example, let's take a plaid shirt that you really like. It is plaid with blue, pink, green, yellow, and purple. Lots of colors, very bold, very big. But we're gonna take one of those colors that we really like. Because it's the summertime, let's go with purple. So for the purple, what you're going to do is you're going to layer your plaid shirt with purple. Maybe you'll do a purple pants, maybe you'll do a purple undershirt, maybe a purple jacket. The goal is to bring out one of the colors in the plaid shirt and to let the plaid shirt be the pop of color, if you will, the extra pop, not the defining moment. Another way of styling prints in a more muted and modest way is to surround the print in neutrals. I know it sounds a little bit strange, but just go with me here for a minute. When it comes to making the print more of the pop, not the centerpiece, you want all of the other surrounding pieces to be neutral and loud. Let's take the plaid shirt from the original example. This time, instead of pulling out one of the colors and letting the plaid shirt be the pop of color, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the base color of the actual shirt. I know it's a little bit strange, but every single print has a base. Print just can't live in the air all by itself. It has to be backed by something. So in this example, we're gonna say our plaid shirt is backed by white, which means all of the other neutrals we're gonna wear are going to be white. We're going to wear white pants, maybe a white skirt. We might do a white dress and wear our plaid top open and as a jacket. We might tie it around our waist and wear it as a belt instead. But we're gonna choose the base of the print and that's going to be our focal point for the outfit. And we're going to let the print be the pop of color. Another option when it comes to styling with prints is to find a pattern that matches the same color as the base itself. In this case, we're gonna go with a different pattern for this example. Instead, we're gonna look at birds. Birds, I know, very strange, but again, just trust me. There are lots of really beautiful prints that have animals in them that are the same color as its base fabric. In this example, we're gonna say we have a pair of pants that are black with embroidered black birds. At first glance, the pants just look black. There's nothing interesting going on with them. They're just a solid standard pair of pants. But upon closer inspection, you'll notice that there is this really interesting print design that are birds. Maybe you love birds. Maybe you love animals and that's exactly what you loved about these pants, but they're prints as well. So they're a bit more neutral. They're a little bit more modest. They're a little bit more muted. So when styling prints that are the same color as the base fabric, what you're going to want to do is hone in on the print design itself. In this example of our black pants with birds, I would highly recommend pairing those pants with a neutral top. Ideally, a solid neutral top. Stick to your beiges, whites, taupes, creams, etc. And then for the accessories, we're gonna tie in with those birds. Maybe a cute bracelet with a bird charm. Maybe a pendant necklace that has a bird on it. Maybe fly away or 
wing earrings. You might even get a hair clip that's in the shape of a bird. The point is you want the story that your pants are telling. You want the print story to be subtle. Nothing too bold, nothing too exaggerated, just something that says, hey, there's a little extra thing going on here, but you don't want it to be the center of attention. Truthfully, styling prints is a lot of fun, and there are lots of ways that you can style print in a more modest and conservative way. And if you would like to see what I'm talking about, don't forget to follow me on Instagram because I will have examples posted there as well. When it comes to dressing modestly, it's really not as scary as it sounds. It is absolutely possible to be modest and fashionable at the same time. And I really hope that you enjoyed some of these tips and tricks on how to do that. If you want a more in-depth dive of each of these topics that I couldn't cover on today's episode, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast where I'll have bonus episodes about each of these individual topics, as well as a couple of extra ones that are my personal favorite. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram to see all of the amazing pictures and examples that were discussed today and in future episodes. I'm really excited that we spent this time together, and I really hope that these tips and tricks really helped you define your look in a modest way. In the next episode, we are going to continue our deep dive into how modesty isn't a mystery. The topic of next episode is to see or not to see. It's going to be a fun exploration of how to be fashionable while we're covered up. Now, we did talk very briefly about it in today's episode, but in the next episode, we're going to take a more in-depth look into what fashionable choices can we make in our daily wardrobe that is going to help us stay modest in this world that is all about bearing it all. I'm really excited to share some tips and tricks with you guys because it's something that I'm a bit passionate about as well. Anyway... I will see you beautiful ladies in the next episode. Have a good one.